Hello everyone. Today I will be showing you how I made this audio reactive 3D voxel effect using Touch Designer. Before we get started, a few things. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see future tutorials. The project files for my tutorials are available to my supporters on Patreon to use however you want. And one last thing, I'm a freelance touch designer developer, so if you have a project you'd like help with, don't hesitate to contact me. The links for my Patreon and contact info are in the description. Let's get started uh, with our variables. So I'm going to actually start with a keyboard in and rename that to be my reset for my, my feedbacks later on. And then uh, I'm also going to add my audio. Go ahead and add my audio in. I'm just going to use the default uh, touch designer audio in. This obviously can be whatever you want to use. I'm going to use a math to combine these together. So I'm going to combine them with an add and then an analyze with uh, RMS power. And then I'm going to normalize these using an envelope and a math. So you take, you take your envelope, you can extend your envelope width a bit, and then take your analyzed value and your envelope and then do a divide. So combine chops divide. And that should give you, let's add a trail here so we can visualize this, should give you a zero to one, um, nice zero to one audio level. And then uh, I'm also gonna just put this into a filter just because I know I don't want too much, uh, too much up and down. So let's see, right now my filter's doing a little too much smoothing for what I want. So I'm gonna bring uh, this, this width down and I'm gonna bring my effect down. So I just wanna smooth some of these bumps out a little bit so that they're, they're not quite as, um, quite as intense and quite as like, uh, as often or quite as bumpy as these are. Okay, so let's put, uh, let's rename this actually first to be audio and then I'm going to merge that with my reset go to into a null call this variables I'm going to right click in a view and drag it up to the top here and then I'm going to select all of this and right click and collapse just to keep everything kind of out of the way all right so now I've got my variables let's start making uh, what's going to drive uh, my my particle ripples? So I'm going to start with the circle and put the resolution. I'm going to do 1080 by 1080 to start. And let's see, this circle I think I want to be around 0.15. I'm going to bring that into a noise because I don't want my ripple to be. Um, as, as you'll see later, with the ripple move, ripples moving in and out, I want it to have some variability on what parts of the ripple move. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this noise and I'm going to say input times noise, and set the alpha to input, and I'll put that into a transform, and then into a null. So let's call this pulse, and our transform we're going to transform it with this audio level so let's put that on non to translate oops i just exited out of my my variables let's bring that back up okay so in the transform i'm going to go to my strength put this audio level into my scale so my scale reference i should have this nice pulsing um pulsing circle okay that's a good start so now um to turn this into a ripple, I'm going to use a optical flow feedback. So in my palette, I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to scroll down and find my optical flow. I'm going to drag, drag this into optical flow. So this should be visualizing what direction each of these pixels is moving at any one point. Uh, I'm going to bring it into a null to start and then put it into a feedback loop. And then with optical flow feedback, I put the feedback into a displace, so it displaces itself. So um, I drag those in, and using only red and green, my midpoint's going to be zero. My displace weight is going to be, I'm going to do 0 0.03 for this to start. Probably have to go back and change this later. Uh, I'm also going to bring it into a blur. Blur. And I'm also going to do a trans transform and then uh, also a math. I'm going to fade it out with a math and then into an add. 
I know that's a lot of different things, but uh, they'll all go together nicely. So let's connect our ad and then bring that into our feedback. So we should start seeing um, some some rippling happen here soon. So uh, let's go ahead in our feedback and, and uh, connect our reset. And then I also need to start adding more to these. So let's see. First of all, actually, go, let's go way back to the beginning here. Let's add a let's add a blur in here as well, uh, just after our uh, optical flow. And then for this blur, I know I'm only gonna I only care about calculating the the red and green values of this whole loop. So, um, so I, I I set my blur to be red and green, red and green only. <clears throat> All right. So um, let's look at our A and N to see what's happening here. So I'm getting some ripples and displace, but let's see if we can play with this a little bit. If I move this into negative, so then I start getting a little more flow out. Let's, um, let's see what else we can, we can just tweak this to be what we want. So if I do negative, negative 0 0.002, 0 0.03, so now I'm getting a nice, nice sort of ripple motion happening and it's pushing itself out to the edges, okay? So uh, let's start with that and see how far that gets us. So the way this is gonna work is our particle system, we're gonna have a grid of particles and then the height of those particles or the, the Z um, value of those particles is gonna be set based on, on this sort of ripple value. Right now, these are red and green values, so if I A and N, you see I get uh, these sort of um, A and N, or the red and green values, um, but I, I need these um, just in one single, um, one single variable. So let's make this uh, monochrome. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and because um, because we have uh, positive and negative values before the monochrome, let's put in a limit. And let's say make these positive only. So now I get um, now I get a nice uh, nice spread values that are all around. Um, with just, just my height values, this is what my height value for my, my Z depth is gonna be. Okay, um, this is RG still, so let's let's change this just to be a 32 bit mono for now. All right, and this is gonna be my main driver for the height. So uh, let's start making our particle grid. So I know that I don't want my particle grid to be 1080 by 1080. I want it, um, I don't, you know, I don't wanna make a million particles right now, uh, but let's knock that down with a res, a resolution. And in the common, let's go half resolution. And um, yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna have, that's gonna be, you know, my blue value is gonna be straight up what, whatever that is. Then my red, and green, my red and green values, I want to be just the grid values. So I'm gonna create a, a grid using a GLSL. And this should be really simple. Um, all I do for this is I, I copy this v, VUV.ST into this line here, so. V uv dot st comma zero for the blue. So this is saying a vec four, so four a, a vector with four variables with the red and green being from this st value, the blue being zero, the alpha being one. Uh, and right now this is just a 32-bit mono, so that's why it's only grayscale. But if I change this to a 32RG, I get my my nice uh, UV grid here with size based on, on what my input is. So that is what I want. So let's combine these together with the reorder. So my red and green values are from input one, my blue values are from input two, and I want that to be from actually the red channel on here. And I need to change this now to be 32-bit RGBA. And um, I also, um, I want my particles to not just be in a square shape, I'm gonna use a circle shape. So uh, let's also create out of this a circle. Um, sorry, circle. And I only care about using the resolution, and then I'm going to bring that into my reorder, and then I'm going to say for my alpha value, I'm going to take it from input three, and I want it to be from the luminance. Um, great. Okay. So let's put that into a null. We're going to call that position, and then let's make our instancing network now. So we're going to use a box. It's going to be really small, so 0.02 or so point. O2, and then let's bring that into a geo, create our camera. Uh, for the material, we're gonna do a fog material because I wanna use shadows in this, so that means we'll also bring in a light. 
and a render. Um, let's make our render size, uh, let's do 1280 by 1280 for now. And okay, that, let's make sure I drag my material on. And then let's start making our instancing. So in the geo, I'm gonna turn on instancing, drag my position in, R, G, B, and then alpha is where my active is gonna be. So that's gonna make my, my circles, it's gonna crop out those edge pixels. And then um, let's just manually move our camera in so we get a nice closer look at this. A little bit angled from the side. Uh, it's for our render dragon output. And we'll hit right click view so we have a preview that we can we can check out as we're changing things going forward. All right. So uh, first of all, these, these are popping up pretty high. Um, that's because my blue value, I have some kind of sharp um, high point or high, high pixel values coming out of this. So uh, from this mono, I'm just going to add in a, a blur here. And this should help me knock down what the maximum amount of those pixels is going to be. So yeah, cool. All right. Um, okay, what's next? Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and out of my out of my resolution. I also want to add a color to these. So um, let's just do kind of a random color from the noise. So let's do a noise. Turn off monochrome. Uh, let's turn up the period to like 22. Make sure it's 32 bit RGBA. Uh, I only care about the noise and yeah, let's start with that. Let's let's change the seed just to get something different. Let's go with that. Let's put it in the null, call it color, and then add this to our interesting second tab. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit more on what we're doing here. All right. It's already looking a little interesting. Let's go ahead and go look at our light. So I'm gonna make this a pretty dramatic angle on the light so that way um, I can see the depth I'm getting. So I'm gonna add a shadow, some soft, soft shadow from the top. Um, and then just gonna do some sort of fill light on the side maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe even turn this one down a little bit. Okay. Cool. Um, this is looking a little too smooth for me right now. I want to add a little bit of graininess to it. And instead of adding that just in the color, I'm going to add that uh, in the rotation of the boxes themselves. So uh, I'm actually going to copy and paste what I've got here. And instead of using this for color, I'm going to use this for rotation. So um, because of that, I can change it to a 32RG. Let's rename the null to rotation. Um, and back in the noise, let's go, um, let's put our period way down so that it's pretty much random. Uh, and then let's make sure these are nearest pixel. Uh, and then for the noise, I'm going to offset from zero and I'm going to make the amplitude 180 because I want to rotate up to 180 degrees in both directions uh, on the X and Y values. It should give me a, a good enough random rotation. Okay, so now I get this nice graininess to it from, from the different boxes facing different directions. Uh, they still look a little static, so I'm gonna add some some amp, or some or animation to this by, in my rotation noise, I'm gonna add apps time <clears throat> about seconds. Uh, that's a little overly snowy looking, so let's do like divided by four or something. Maybe six, yeah, so, so I get it. Kind of some interesting movement. I don't know how easy it is to see with uh, with like YouTube compression, but okay. Uh, and also now I'm noticing like on some of these like hard uh, the sloped edges, I'm seeing the lines of the the grid. I want to mix those up a little bit. So um, it back going back to my my GLSL, I'm gonna add a little noise after this as well. This is gonna get bad before it gets better. So let's see. So in here I'm gonna add noise. I'm gonna change it to random offset zero and the amplitude, I'm gonna say one over uh, me dot width. So that's just gonna bump those pixels around a little more so they're not quite as lined up in a grid. If I wanna do that even more, I could say like, you know, in parentheses, oops, in parentheses do me dot width divided by three or something. 
So that way they're, they're even more kind of spread about. Okay, uh, let's see, what else can we add to this? Uh, let's tweak a little bit more of our lighting here. Um, maybe maybe turn up this, this main shadow light. Um, zoom out a little bit, maybe take a more sharper angle at it. Okay, um, let's do a little bit of post-processing on this as well. I'm gonna take my render out into a circle and I'm gonna just use that for the resolution. And then in here, I'm gonna turn up my background alpha, turn down my fill and turn up my softness and um, even go past what it normally does here. And then I'm gonna use this as sort of a vignette. Um, okay, let's bring back actually our Our value and um, we can bring down our background. Okay, let's bring that in. Uh, it's maybe a little more extreme than I want. Um, let's instead instead of using this actually instead of using this for a vignette, let's use this for um, a luma blur. So let's bring these both up and then um, add in a luma blur. <clears throat> let's make sure I train this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so Luma Blur, and then um, let's turn up the filter where the uh, the black black filter turn down the Y. So I get nice and clear pixels in the middle, and they start to blur out as I go further up. Okay, um, let's also let's see before this even let's let's add a null in here. Actually, I don't need to. I'm just using that for resolution. All right, let's add a, instead of that, let's do a, a bloom before this. Um, maybe drop my bloom radiuses a bit. And let's see, keep tweaking a little bit on this. Let's, let's see if we can get a little brighter set of colors here as well. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Let me, let me bring this radius up a little more even. Okay. Let's see, what else can we add here? I like where this is going. Let's see if we can get a more intense shadow maybe cast on here. Yeah. Then we can also play with things like going into um, into our feedback loop here. So um, actually, I, I put this transform in, but I haven't tried it out yet. So if I want the the scale out to happen a little faster, so I can scale it to 1.01, .01 and I get a little faster, you know, depending on the intensity of the music. So yeah, um, this is what I've got. Um, just kind of a fun audio reactive voxel effect that uh, the uh, the ripples kind of ripple out with the speed of the audio, and um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for today. Um, so thanks again for watching. Uh, if you end up uh, copying this or maybe tweaking this on your own, making your own thing out of it, definitely tag me in it. I will reshare anything anybody makes uh, if they tag me in it, if it's from one of my tutorials. And uh, I look forward to seeing it. Thanks so much.